Hi, I'm Timothy Lemoyne, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to take a piece of plexiglass and cut out custom made keychains. Uh, it's a 20 minute video. Before you commit to that, you might want to be sure you have the right tooling. Check below in the description and uh, look at what I'm using. Make sure that you still or you already have those tools. Uh, another thing that's going to be useful, particularly for my students, is uh, you want to be sure you're using the jump to section. Uh, it's in the description. That way, day to day, as you work through this design process in class, you can always get to that specific point in the video that applies to you. All right, so if you've decided to watch this video, you need to go to my website. It's at the top here, timothylemoyne.com. And uh, this is actually an unpub unpublished version at this point, but when you, uh, when you look for it, you can just search keychain and it'll pop up. So this is make your own keychain. And I talk about kind of the process, but the key is, is you need this illustrator template. So I'm gonna click on it. And uh, when this window pops up, I'm in Google Chrome. So yours would look the same if you're using Google Chrome. I am going to download and I will see my file show up right down here in the downloads bar. From there, I'm gonna take it immediately to my desktop. And uh, if you're a student with me, at least uh, for 2017, hopefully it doesn't change again soon, you will need to move this file into your own personal drive. And uh, I would recommend creating a folder just for this pro project. So I'm gonna go keychain assignment. And file management on this kind of stuff is pretty important. And uh, if you keep all your files together in the same place and you don't move them, you are going to find that uh, your rate of success and your issues that you encounter are, are far less. So this one's in the correct spot. Now from this location, I will open it. And as soon as you open it, it's probably a good idea to change the file name. Include your name in it. So I am going to do a file save as and get a Lemoyne in there so that this file name is unique to my work. So now it's Lemoyne, two keychains, student design. And uh, you can leave this other stuff there. So save, cool, I got my own copy. You actually have two design spaces. I always ask you to design one for yourself and then I ask you to design one to give away to somebody else. So your design, one for you to give away. You choose which one I grade. It doesn't matter to me. You'll show me your best one. I want a picture on my design. So this particular one's for me. Uh, I've already kind of gotten a lot of this ready to go ahead of time. So uh, if I were to go back to the web, you'll notice that the first thing that I looked for was a border. I like to have a border in my design. And I searched for a checkerboard border. Those were my search words. And uh, some of these are good examples. Some of them are bad, but a border is what I'm starting with. So for me, that's going to be something like this right here. So I'm going to hit this guy up. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to save image as. And I'm going to rename it checker border. And then I'm going to save to my, oh, this is important, to my personal folder that I created for this assignment, keychain assignment. Okay, good. And now I'm going back to the software. And this is really important. I am going to go file and then place. Come on, where'd you go? Place. Cool. And I'm going to checker border, going to place this thing. It'll probably come in quite large. Yep, for sure. Double click on the hand. And uh, I am going to resize this. As I resize, I'm holding down the shift key so that the dimensions don't skew. And I'm just kind of getting it closer to the shape that I want. Go back to the magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom in. Move tool. I want it up in this corner. I'm actually not holding the shift key now because for a border, I actually don't care if it skews. All right, I've got it. Uh, this X here is a problem because you're going to give this file to me. I need you to embed this. That means it becomes a per permanent part of this particular drawing. Next thing I want is uh, I want a picture that is meaningful to me. I didn't uh, tell you the backstory on what I'm designing here, but what I'm designing is a keychain for... Uh, 
for my my uh, I've got a little racetrack that I keep on my property and my son uh, races his go-kart around there uh, sometimes my buddies and I do the same thing and uh, so I kind of just want a racing theme hence the uh, checkered border and uh, I'm gonna look for a go-kart clip and as I looked for them for the uh, label for use, reuse with modification I didn't love a lot of the images so I'm gonna go with this helmet it's kind of old school it's more my style so I'm gonna click on that guy uh, it seems like it looks pretty cool. I like the shape. Um, not 100% how it's going to look when it burns, so it's an experiment to some extent. Um, but I'm saving that. Same process. Putting it into the folder that I've created for the keychain assignment and not moving anything as I work. That's going to be a key at our school at least for your success. Back to a file place. Here's the helm. Short for helmet, I'm guessing. Uh, same situation. This one I'm definitely holding shift as I resize. Better zoom out here. Um, I don't want to skew a helmet. I think that would look incredibly poor if I had it either kind of tall and skinny or short and stout. Um, so this guy's going in there. Back to zoom in on this space. Still working on resizing this. This is way too big. And I'll kind of play with placement, but again, I want to be sure that I embed. So now it's placed in there. I might move it. I might make it a little bigger, a little smaller, but the general idea is, is I've got a main image. All right. So this section, I'm actually, uh, I've gone back and I've watched my video and I noticed, uh, well, after I burned, I've noticed that the red color of this helmet actually makes the engraver cut, which, you know, it makes sense. Um, so, something that I learned, I need to change the way that this particular image acts. And when I click on it, this option for image trace comes up. And typically I tell people just to kind of mess around with these and select one where their object looks the best. And for my particular image, shades of gray is what was best for the engraving. That being said, other things that I kind of picked up on, I have learned now that with regard to engraving, at least on plexiglass like we're doing for this assignment, three-dimensional objects do not look the best. Later you're going to see me add one in that I've made uh, as my giveaway, and that has all two-dimensional images on it, and I believe that that is the way to go. You're also going to notice in a moment that this helmet goes back to red. Keep in mind, I'm coming back and I'm editing. so. When you see this as red, it's just because uh, I'm not I'm not gonna record this over again. So I'm just gonna go with it. Now I wanna create some text around it. So I'm gonna go into the text tool. And to start out, I'm just gonna click here. And I'm gonna start out by typing in the name of my racetrack. Yes, I have named my racetrack, kinda weird I know. Uh, but it is the Tin Civ Speedway. So there's the Tinsive Speedway, uh, back to moving it. And now I'm just kind of working on spacing. So kind of like looking at it, I would like you to fill the visual space. So it's like, okay, I got some empty space here, some empty space there. How do I make this look better? So I'm gonna have the Tinsive and then Speedway down here. I think it'll make better use of the space. So I'm gonna highlight this. I want to look for a more interesting font. So I'm coming up to this area where the fonts are. I'll go all the way up, start here, click on this font here so it turns blue and just use the arrow keys on my keyboard and flip through these so I can see all the different fonts that are available to me. I want to pick something a little bit more unique just to make this appear to be more custom. Um, I think it's kind of boring just to uh, use a typical old serif or sans serif because that's what I commonly see. I want this to be different. This one's a little bit different as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I do not like the spacing. I don't like this negative space here. So now I'm going to start playing with my font size. And I can use one of these prescribed numbers or I can type in a specific number if I'm like, oh, 18 so close to perfect but not quite. Okay, 19. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I go in and uh, I place this. I actually think that's a little big, but I'm gonna just go with it. Um, so I've got the tin sieve and I'm gonna add a new text box here. And this is where it's gonna say speed way. And I'm gonna move this into position. 
And this I am going to change the font size on as well because I want to fill the space. It's my preference. Uh, if you're getting this graded by me, that's one of the things I look for to ensure that you do, that you're filling the space. All right, so I've got my basic design, intensive speedway, awesome. All right, so once you have a design set, you have an image, words, as well as a border, the next thing is, is you gotta tell the laser how it is that you're gonna cut this out. And for that, you need to select a shape. And the tool I'm gonna use, it's the rectangle tool, but if I right click on it, there are other options. I personally don't recommend the rectangle tool simply because you'd have sharp pointy corners on it and probably would not be very comfortable in your pocket. I am gonna go ahead and use the rounded rectangle tool. You're welcome to use any shape. The key is, is just stay within these guidelines here. And as long as you stay inside of those, um, any shape is considered acceptable. I'm gonna go all the way to the ends and uh, create that. The key to getting the laser to cut this out is color as well as line weight. So right now I'm up in my colors and interestingly enough, both of them are showing up as transparent, which is rather rare. Uh, I actually don't know if this is fill color or line color. I feel like it's fill color, which you would want to have no fill. If I were to do a color like white, you'll notice that. Hey, where'd my drawing go? So no fill on this particular one. This one right here, it absolutely has to be laser red, which I've placed on the bottom. That's why this template is useful. So it's laser red. And then finally, uh, how, what point is the uh, stroke weight at? And this number is crucial that you get it right. The number is 0 0.01 mm for millimeters. And uh, it looks almost transparent when you put that in. And uh, that is okay. You can see it is very almost indistinguishable, but it is right there. And because we're doing this last, it's ending up on top of all these things and it will allow a cut, which is very important. Uh, the other thing you need, I'm gonna zoom in is we need a place to fasten some hardware. And it's most likely that for this, I'll give you a key ring or some sort of a chain or a pole or something like that. Um, but because we're not gonna actually tool these in any way, we need to tell the laser to also cut a hole for us to fasten something in. So I'm gonna make a circle and uh, you will notice that, oop, I'm sorry, wrong tool, delete. I am going to make a circle by using the ellipse tool. And when I make a circle, if it is perfectly round, I get that little plus sign in there. These are movable. And I feel like a natural question would be, well, hey, Lemoyne, how big should I make this circle? And what I'm gonna tell you is, just to be sure it is plenty big, we're gonna go with 0.125 for both dimensions. Try not to get it too close to the edge and uh, do some kind of a centering thing. I have a checkerboard pattern, so as far as placements go, it makes placing this thing fairly easy. Um, but kind of think about, well, where is that placement? Don't get it too high or too low. Try to make sure that the placement looks professionally done. Uh, another thing that would be wise is just make sure you're in laser red. I should be, because I just made this shape. And even though I'm pretty confident it is at 0.01 millimeters, uh, I can be a bit obsessive and I am just going to type that in to be certain that it is 0.01 millimeters. Here I am typing it a third time here, just to be sure. So uh, like I said, that line weight is important. If we do this last in our design, it ensures that these things are on top, which is important. Uh, there are other ways like, oh man, I drew it too early or too late. Um, we can arrange how those things go, but uh, for the most part, I'm gonna hope that you're doing it this way. Uh, I'm actually gonna do a little editing here and I'm gonna edit in my other design. So this one's for me. In a moment, you're gonna see the one that pops up. Uh, I'm gonna make one for my wife, so check this out. All right, so uh, this is my second design. My wife's name is Nicole, and uh, I wrote her a little love note there and uh, wanted her to know that she is special to me. I wanna keep a reminder of that every day. So uh, 
basically same kind of thing. You can see that I have a border. I went a lot simpler on this one, so that's just gonna get etched into the plexiglass. You can see my thin red line at 0.01 millimeters, and you can see that I'm also cutting a hole in that so that I have a place to put the uh, keychain itself through. So that is my basic design. Now I just kind of have to do some housekeeping things. So, uh, okay, I'm updated on my saves. You guys didn't see that, but it happened. Uh, all these little guidelines, they were necessary during the design process. Now they need to go away. So I'm on the selection tool and I'm just dragging a selection to get rid of some of these lines. I'm gonna hit the delete key on my keyboard. Same thing over here, select those two, delete. Select these three guys, delete. And same thing over in this space as well. So those are going away. Next, you are gonna end up giving me this file so that I can make a burn for you. So I am gonna select all of these things. Right now I click on individual parts and move them and that's part of the design process. But now I want them to move together as one unit. So I drag a selection over everything and then I go object group and uh, like I was saying now when I click in here I move them and they all stay together got to keep in mind that I'm not burning these one at a time I'm sticking an entire classrooms worth of stuff and uh, putting it on the laser engraver and doing a bunch all at once so this is the key and again assuming you're a student of mine uh, you're going to hit a save and uh, you're going to look for further instruction about where to save this thing. But two designs, one for you, one for somebody else. Right, so these are the finished products. Uh, you can see that uh, the one for my wife uh, turned out pretty well. It's a two-dimensional shape. I highly recommend going with the two-dimensional. Uh, the one for our go-karts, um, the Tin Civ Speedway. Uh, I would argue that the helmet doesn't look very good, and I blame that almost entirely on the fact that it's a three-dimensional shape. Um, but, you know... Whatever, it'll, it'll hold keys, so I'm gonna go with that. Uh, the only other thing that I'd put on it, and uh, you got certainly a lot of different options that you could use for key rings, but uh, this is what I got. I found them on Amazon. Uh, I do have a affiliate link down in the description, so if that's something that interests you, you can use that link. And uh, basically, when you get yours, um, you would just thread that in, and you do the same for both, and you got yourself a keychain. So, lickety split. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, subscribe, like. Uh, appreciate any feedback you might have. Take care.